I'm Matt Clare from the Center for Teaching and Learning Educational Technologies. I'm going to talk to you about Brock University's Wiki server, Kumu. Wiki is Hawaiian for quick, Kumu is Hawaiian for teach. Our Wiki server here at Brock University works a lot like the world's largest Wiki, Wikipedia, in that when you make an edit, you can get the immediate results placed on the article, but every single edit made by your colleagues is tracked. You can compare them at any point. Our Wiki server uses your campus ID and password and allows you to work on your class project in a collaborative environment where the articles are saved and tracked. So let's take a look at my computer here. So here is kumu.brocky.ca. You can see we first land here. We have a full listing of all the public wikis, the ones that require an account to log into, and some of the ones that require a sole special password and an account. So yours may or may not be listed here. I'm going to go into our anything wiki, a place to play. So here's our simple anything wiki. One thing that's important to keep in mind when you're working on a wiki is you can always press edit instead of entering content. Here's the edit button at the top here. Here's the existing content. I can either replace it by selecting what's there and deleting it, or I can start amending it. But the most important thing is if I just start typing and it's save, it's on that page. I can then go back and edit, add more information. And if I'm comfortable with this, I can start adding formatting that we'll go through in a second. But keep in mind, this is a collaborative space. So if your colleagues are more comfortable formatting, laying out, and other more technical elements of editing wiki, then you can add your content and rely on their expertise in that area. Most important thing though is as long as you can edit and type, you can add content. And you can see if I click on history at the top, I can see all the previous revisions. I'll go back to article and there's the content again. And what makes this a wiki in particular is that I can hit edit and here is the wiki markup that results in that article. So I'm going to start by removing everything and adding this content. This is my wiki. I'm going to scroll down here and press save. And that's the new content. So you can see if I go back to the history, here's our current edit. I can compare the two. That's what was there. That's what is there. And back here, there's the content. That's the basics of editing a wiki. Let's add some style to this, though. So I'm going to hit edit. And if I wanted to make this bold, I can click on this. I can select that text and click this bold item. And I need to preview it. There we are. If I save it, changes are made. If I edit again, I can add some more options through here. Super text, subtext, references, YouTube links. Let's go through some of these now. I'm going to jump over to a cheat sheet, which is available publicly and, of course, sourced from Wikipedia. Here are some hints about wiki markup. It's not that difficult. It does look intimidating at times, but it's a lot easier than the actual HTML markup that goes behind web pages. And this is useful in that you can use this for all media wiki sites, which includes, of course, Wikipedia. So we have examples here of italics and bold, which we just saw, and then both combined. An internal link, so a new article inside that wiki. A redirect. We can ignore that for now. Links. If you put in a URL, it'll turn into a link automatically. If you'd like to have certain text displayed, but then go somewhere so someone clicks it, that, so that is added. So here's our example here. Headings and images. So let's go over back to our article here. And let's add some headings. So I can heading one, heading two, heading three. Here they are previewed. And then to turn them into proper headings inside our wiki, I can use this giant A item to add a level two heading. And I can do that to all th three, or I can mix and match and type in the two equals on either side. 
and that will give us three headings. So let's save that now. Here's our article. And then to make subheadings, you add extra equal signs balancing each side of the heading. So let me demonstrate. Three headings, or three equals, we'll have a subheading under our two equals heading one there. And I'll balance that out and we'll hit preview. So here's our subheading. I'll add another one. And I'll add a third one. And hit save. So we both create a hierarchy from adding extra equal signs there. So you can see that we've got um, a 1.1, a 1.2, and a 1.21. And when we had more than three headings total of any le level of uh, hierarchy here, that added this contents item to our page. So that's automatically generated for us, and we have large text in here. This is a handy little item that you can find, of course, in Wikipedia pages. So let's add some text right here. So a whole bunch of text. Oh, let's save. There's our whole bunch of text. And if I wanted to jump down to heading three, there we are. That navigation is created for us again through the markup of our article. So that's the simple headings layout. Let's turn, so we'll scroll all the way down here, and we can see there's heading three. Add a link to Brock University's website. Save that. And there's our link. And off it goes to Brock University. Or, we can edit that and use that other notation that mentioned where you can put actual text around that link. So I've got these square brackets on either side. I'll hit save. And there's our link off to Brock University with proper text. And once again, I have one more link this time to Google. There's our three items there. So right now I'm going to switch to editing just one section. You'll notice there's an edit link on the right here. So we'll edit just, just one section. And what I also want to do is turn these into a list. So I can add them as a numbered list by simply prepending a number sign in front of each item. I'll keep them down to one line. And this again is in this cheat sheet. Here's our numbered list example. So the number sign signs it prepending each one. And if I hit preview, you see they're in an itemized list. The nice thing about doing it this way is, for example, we've got two links to Brock University. I can change sequence and not have to care at all what the numbering is. And further, if I put two number signs in here, we've got that indented list. So we've got item one and item one one. And let's add in a link to Isaac Sakai here. And save that. And here's our numbered list. We can also add bullets. Just by putting a star or asterisk at the star of each item. You'll notice I'm varying between having a space or not, that's entirely up to you if you want to have this, the space there or not. And here's our bulleted list and the same principle of having sublists apply, so two asterisks. Here's our list. Indented properly. So that's creating lists. Links, lists, all it's left to do now is play with images and references, which will be in our next video.